Hello everyone, welcome to Rolling Stories. I'm your host Adrian Tan and today we are rolling into the heart of a question keeping many HR professionals up at night. Can machines learn the human stuff? AI is storming the HR landscape promising efficiency and automation. But are we at risk of trading our humanity for a sterile data-driven approach? Is there space for both humans as well as machines to collaborate in the future of HR? So on today's episode, we'll tackle these questions head on, peeling back the layers and diving deep into this story. Explore how to navigate this AI revolution, strike a balance between technology as well as human touch. And hopefully, at the end of it, you will also be motivated to develop some of the skills you need to stay relevant and impactful in this landscape. So with that, our guest today will be sharing us a bit more about this aspect Welcome to the show, Rashid. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Edward, for having me on the show. Very good afternoon. I believe in Singapore, it's afternoon. And UA, it's early morning, 9 o'clock. All well. Thank you so much for making time for on this morning. Perhaps to start off with, could you help us to understand more about yourself? Okay, so a quick introduction would be, a brief introduction, I would say, would be my, like, I've been in this region, my mind and myself, Rashid, first of all. And I am going to be heading an HR department of an FMCG organization in Dubai, UAE. And I'm in this region for around, I would say, 15 plus years. And I started my career, although in sales, but for the first five years, I got understood the culture, the language, the people. And, you know, there's a, the UAE is actually, they say there's a melting pot of cultures. So a lot of different nationalities, there was a different exposure. And then I realized, okay, I usually enjoy meeting you and like you know, get in touching with you, like you know, in touch with humans and in interaction. This is the part which I enjoy the most, and I, and I enjoy learning about the human psychology sort of a thing. So then I realized that maybe I'm long to HR. So from then I shifted my base from sales to HR, and now I'm enjoying more than a decade in HR, learning a lot of new things, and mashallah, it's a great it's an adventure I would say because the moment I came into HR from back in 2011. There are a lot of changes happening in HR domain and HR fields and a lot of automation and sort of things being changed. So it's interesting and I'm still exploring. So as an I as I always say to my colleagues and other people who I meet, I'm the kind of HR who like, you know, wants to bring back the touch of human in the age of AI. I usually mention it in that way because this is what I personally believe it should be there. So that's I Which think is the thing that's that we'll be covering today. And yes. by, by the way, it's really interesting to note your previous background before going into HR. I think I've spoken with so many HR people in this lifetime. I've spoken with engineer turn HR, bankers turn HR, marketing turn HR. But you probably will be the first salesperson <laughs> that I know of, or former salesperson that turned HR. True, true. I'm sure there's a story there we should love to explore yeah. uh, next time. Yeah. Let's jump right in. AI is taking over everything, even HR. How scared should we be about robots replacing people in HR? Is there room for both in the future? Okay. So when you say like, you know, the robots replacing HR sort of thing, like on, on one, what level it when It's like, you know, I mean, in, in building the, like, you know, when we say in building that, like the AI or human sort of a dream team, so it's very essential, like, you know, to recognize, like, that while technology can augment human intelligence in the HR, and, but it cannot entirely replace it. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm clear in what I'm trying to say. So it cannot be interesting. And the collaboration between AI and, you know, this robotic and, and the human intelligence in HR involves sort of leveraging the strength of both and to create a more efficient and effective framework. That is what I personally and we HR professionals here in this part of the region, particularly I'm sure most other regions also when we have interactions in a lot of seminars, it is what I understand from there also. But what I personally believe is that, like, you know, artificial intelligence, it's it, it's like it's more of excels at processing large volumes of data quickly in terms of identifying the patterns and making predictions in terms of like, you know, based on algorithms. This is what I understand like in, in a brief, if I were to say. When it can automate, like, you know, repetitive tasks and or maybe the resumed screening or scheduling interviews or maybe the analyzing of then employee engagement surveys. But on the other hand, what I personally understand is like, you know, human intelligence is something which brings empathy or the creativity or, or I would say like you know, the critical thinking part of it. And and an and emotional intelligence is to the table when 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 one when one to one the discussions happen. So as long as human can interpret this complex sort of situations, we can make the decisions. 
and provide personalized support to employees, it's fine. Robot robots will be there. We cannot completely change the the, the dynamics of the IT getting into HR. Previously, it was just HR, and you know people were dealing with the people. But now HR tech has become more advanced. Many seminars, a lot of seminars from the last I've made from the start of this year, from January to almost now we are completing the February. Almost five. Three to five seminars I have attended. Then majority of the speakers, the focus was into how AI is coming into HR and what HR role will be there. What's the future of AI in HR? You know those sort of things. What is the future of HR in AI? Which is the future of AI, yeah, HR in AI? In this sort of thing, there are a lot of debates, discussions, the opinions going around. So robotic will be there. There should not be a problem. But in in, in a future proof, I would say in an HR framework. If AI is something like you know they can handle the routine administrative tasks and like you know, freeing up the uh, an HR professionals in terms of to focus on the more of the strategic initiatives and providing a, a high tech high tech support, like you know, in terms of to employees. Because this is what usually do. Although human intelligence can, you know, they can do the algorithms and you know they can guide artificial intelligence. Because what I understand is artificial intelligence AI is something which we feed the data. It's not they have their own concept and mentality to think and you know interpret. It's what we feed the data into. So. We, if we put the more of algorithm, we can guide them, and we are. But we have to ensure, like you know, it's not like they should be fair. They should be ethical, or maybe like you know, and it should be aligned with the organizational values in whichever organization I'm working. Every culture, every company has its own value. So, moreover, humans can intervene when you know our AI can, you know, in terms of in ambiguous situations or when a personal touch is needed. But robotic will be there, so there should not be a problem. And ultimately, like you know, the collaboration between AI and and, and human intelligence in HR career will be like you know, it, it will be more of a symbolic, I would say, relationship where like you know, each complements the other strengths. We as an HR, we have our own strength. That we if we include AI, it will be having the own strength. So it will be more resulting in more of an agile or I would say the the the, the empathetic and you know, a more of a forward HR thinking function. So that's mm. how it's it's not a problem. So obviously, we have seen AI doing very impressive stuff, especially since ChatGPT came just a year plus ago, and it has since evolved to quite an impressive state. Where I recently saw this video of Sora, which you can use text and turn it into a video. So that's really amazing. But of course, again, those are really still very quant quantifiable stuff. Things yes. that, of course, human could do, but of course, AI can do better. But when we talk about HR, it's really about the unquantifiable stuff, you know, the empathy and all that. So I would imagine, based on what you said, that empathy aspect will still remain to be quite important as we continue to move along. How do you think we should teach all these crucial skills to HR professionals? And also another question, do you think eventually AI might be able to replicate this human intelligence? Hmm. See, in, in this age of AI and, you know, those sort of things, what I personally understand is like, recently I read a, in an article by SHRM, it was specifically, they created a formula, which I, which really intrigued me in terms of like, you know, and I have a personal, a personal understanding of that, like, you know, when you say that AI plus HI is equal to ROI. So what they basically was trying to say is like, you know, when artificial intelligence is there and plus human intelligence is there, this is what your return on investment or return on investment would be. So for any organization spending a lot of uh, money on the AI and then the building tech companies or maybe the, and like, you know, for a lot of different uh, FMCG companies, there's many other companies now, they have to update and upgrade their market current standards in terms of things. Because AI, as we say, like, you know, it's not a standalone situation. It's like more of AI tools to uh, excel at certain tasks, as we discussed earlier, but it lags in other areas, as you like, like, you know, it requires a human test, like empathy and those sorts of and there, this is where human brings like, you know, a more of empathy or more of inclusivity or, or creativity or where I would say in, in most of the situation, the ethical judgment. AI doesn't have its brain to make the ethical judgment and its ability to navigate to the, like, you know, the complex, the social interactions. So all these, all these and many others, I think uh, things will be there, which AI can't replicate. So whichever data or whichever we have in terms of like, you know, we, we can do all this thing. So that's a different thing. But how, what your question was, how we can develop, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying. You, you, you were wrong. So oh. develop, say, yeah. So in, in terms of developing, when we say like, you know, it's 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 always required, like, you know, when you leverage human intelligence, it's it's necessary. It's like, you know, a shift towards empathetic leadership. So fostering environments where these skills are can be flourishing and, you know, 
a more of encouraging continuous learning in terms of having a mentorship. I'm I'm speaking to you in terms of the organizational point of view. When I being in HR and in terms of my organization and I as in, as in any HR in terms of organization, if they have to bring this sort of culture where obviously we are advancing towards AI also, but we have to have the touch on this also. So it's more of encouraging continuous learning also of how AI can help us and how AI will be there and how empathy will be included, how inclusivity will be there. So encouraging the continuous learning sort of a thing, more of a mentorship because the people who are there more in the senior, they are more dealing with the human part of it. The new generation which is coming, they want everything quick, quick data, you know, at the at a touch of button. So in that way, like we can make them encouraging or more of a continuous learning sort of a thing and giving them a mentorship and promoting a, a sort of a diverse perspectives, which HR professionals can even have the ability to, to, to that they can navigate to, to the nuanced dynamics of this uh, human interaction. It's all about how do we train them. We have to begin involved in comprehensive trainings required or all this stuff. It's not like... Uh, we, in one day, these things can be happening. It will take a lot of time and a lot of planning will be required and every in each organization, depending on the region and country, it will require a different sort of approach. But yes, one-to-one discussion, understanding the organization dynamics and going forward, how it's going to help us, that's more important. See, I always believe it's not like if, if there is a change required, then we have to do it. Change should be for the betterment of a good. Change should not be for the sake of being changed. Everyone is going with the flow. I see a lot of people, no, 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 there's a HR day, okay, these HR embassies there. This new fab trend is in the market. Let's follow it. You have to analyze it, how it collaborates or how it syncs with your current organization. How it aligns with your vision and values. What is the culture of your organization? What's nationality? What is the demographic diversity of organization? That all depends. So in due course of time, with discussion with the department heads, with the managers and with all the people involved in it, I think it can it, it can create a good future if everything is collaborated with, with new course of training, focus and emphasis on training. This is what I believe. So obviously, big data is cool, but it can't tell the whole story. And as you rightly mentioned, there are elements that, of course, HR, the human aspect can still play. Do you have a personal example from your experience where your human intuition, as well as the understanding of the workforce, helped you make a call that data alone probably couldn't catch? See, as a season, I would say, like as an HR professional, I've encountered numerous situations. Where, where human intuition, because I personally believe in having an intuition and, I, and I've experienced a lot of times and I've, uh, when I've spoken this like with my colleagues or with my fraternity guys, like, you no, know, have you encountered such situation? In HR, there's more sort of intuition played, which, which usually plays a critical role, like, you know, irrespective of whatever the data is there or transforming data insights into impactful decision is actually more important. This is what the data work is there. So one such example which I feel like you know, occurred in my in our organization was like you know and analyzing employee turnover rates by using big data analytics. So the data pointed to a particular department where it was experiencing a higher turnover, higher turnover compared to others. It's a sales department. Let let let's give you a sales example. Data department. Obviously, it was a sales department. So while the numbers provided valuable insights, okay, this or they didn't capture the full context behind the issue. So drawing on my understanding, because I know our people, I know what their problem should be and you know, understanding of the HR landscape particularly and, and regular interactions with the employees. I sense and when I spoke to the people also, that a problem might not solely lie with the department itself, but could be, it would be like you know, influenced by a broader organizational factors. So to validate this intuition, I conducted usually on a target interviews or, or with employees from the trouble department or from the section where this problem was happening. And as well as the managers and leaders across different levels. That's what as an HR we should do. I should not only go to the data. Okay, data is very important. But apart from data, what impact that data is going to bring? How my intuition is will be valued. So through this conversation, whenever we had these conversations and you know, we I undercovered I, I, like most of the things what I found was like, you know, it's underlying issues which are related to communication breakdowns, I would say a lack of career development opportunities and a mismatch expectations where between employees and management. So that's what the condition was there. And when I'm armed with this sort of a quantitative data, I collaborated with the stakeholders to implement most of targeted interventions such as like, you know, the improving the communication channels, mentoring programs, and a career path clarity initiatives. Today, the people are not only working in any organization for the sake of salary. Salaries can be given it any, in any organization I work, I'll be getting a maybe a less salary, a little bit high salary. But what motivates me, 
what gives me a i would say a butterfly in my stomach in the morning is is something which which my purpose and vision mission to to go up with the work so over the time the turnover rates within this department particularly in the sales department it decreased significantly and employee satisfaction scores showed a notable improvement so this success demonstrated of like you know what i understood is like you know and many other there's examples in terms of this so this success like you know almost demonstrated the marrying and in marrying the data i would say the data driven insights is there with human intuition is there to drive the meaningful change in sort of an hr landscape so data is will be there but in from that data how you convert that data into intuition into your, into your people because i interact as an hr whichever inter- hrs are there they interact with their people so they know what exactly the problem would be so it's not just taking the data and taking a decision apart from the data would surely help us but with the help of data what's the ground reality the ground reality should be understood one to one discussions need to be happen so this kind of thing we have implemented a lot of in our organization in my previous organization but the data was available although most of the department heads they only go to the data because they don't have that understanding of human sort of a thing so they usually say okay the data shows where well, and in our discussion we used to have an argument or more sort of a healthy discussion or an argument okay the data is there but have you tried to find out what exactly the underlying problem is so it depends it depends on the situation and depends on the one such situation was this which i quoted in terms of the sales department and there are a lot of other situations where data was given but when we try to find out to oh, the, the 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 situation was completely different all the data was helping support in that but in reality there were more underlying issues were there which needs to be addressed one to one understanding was required and for each individual we have to show them okay these are the for the particularly for sales we have to show them that these are the incentives sort of a thing which you will be given and this is the road map because most of the sales are always done with the deadlines and the targets to be achieved respectively the current market situation so we as an individual as a hr or maybe the department had need to analyze the situation and then only you know evaluate and give them the targets so we solved it out so i think that that's one one to one discussion with the with the consent parties is more required rather than going on the just for the sake of data so it sounds to me like that there is definitely a possibility of collaboration rather than of course leaning to each side of the extreme polar opposite so robots obviously isn't be isn't taking over it's more of them becoming a sidekick for hr yes yeah so how, how can we envision a future where ai and human intelligence work together in perfect harmony it bringing its unique strengths to the table how do you envision it person okay so in that case like i would say like you know in in terms of envisioning the data and hr because see always i said it earlier also ai is not a stand alone in in situations it it excels obviously at certain tasks and you know in other areas it, it doesn't work purpose but human other people are there like the data can be generated and compiled so in a data driven world because we as an hr we always driven by data without data we cannot take any dis- uh, any decisions or any strategic understanding it's more of a, like a doctor whenever i visit a doctor or way i is i keep telling my wife like in a year in this part of the region particularly back in india there were not much you know when you go to the doctor they will be do a report so this thing with their experience and understanding they will check your nerves they will check your body temperature and they'll understand of you you may be having this sort of ailment for further understanding of the disease they may so they may do like a certain test but initially they really try to gauge this thing what sort of you know by the symptoms what you're having but in this part of the region particularly in ua what they usually do is without the data i would say without the test without having any blood test without having any x they will do at least a series of tests then only they'll come up to the conclusion so with the experience and the data driven world in like as an hr professional we can maintain that humanity by 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 prioritizing i would like you know the empathy and the personal connection alongside analytics as you said like you know we have to collaborate so by understanding individual i mean needs their concerns and aspirations i think they can ensure like you know where where the data driven decisions are infused with compassion this is this is where i i personally emphasize on in terms of being compassion there are a lot of employees who comes to us they share their problems they share their needs or sometimes we have to fire them so you have to handle that role very compassionately so we have to balance like you know, i would say like you know quantitative insights with with a qualitative understanding i would say which 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 fosters a workplace culture and you know and that values both efficiency and humanity so this is what i believe like you know irrespective of how we maintain humanity in this data driven world or or when ai is impacting as you said like you know ai is impacting every aspect of hr how can we avoid a, a sort of a thing machine learning environment i think machine will be there they will be collaborating with us 
But more than the data-driven world, we have to have this these sort of habits or this sort of practices involved in with our employees or with our HR team or with the other managers, particularly the line managers. Because these are the ones who deal there and daily. So we have to make them continuous learning and understand, make them understand like these are the things which we have to follow, not just the data-driven thing. So I think that would be helping this. Just like how fax machine was invented or when internet was first introduced, yeah. when email was first introduced, it is a constant evolving landscape. But I think what we have to take note of as human beings is we could, of course, on one hand, see all this as a threat, but it's really much more useful to see them as a tool and to make the best out of it. And I think within the HR department, as Rashid, you rightfully mentioned, there is a huge room for collaboration. But it also depends on how welcoming HR professionals would be to this situation. If you were to take a fearful stance, of course, you can see them as your opponent. But I think as what you have mentioned, there is really room for collaboration where we can come to an even better outcome just by working peacefully together. Before we end this episode, we will go into our rapid fire segment. First question, work from home or work from office? Hybrid is the new thing, so I would say just hybrid. In one word, describe your leadership philosophy. So I want leadership is something which I believe particularly because leaders are something which they have to find a balance between implementing their priorities and removing the roadblocks to clear a path for others to do their work and take incentive. What is the best HR advice you have ever given or received? I started my career back in 2006. I still remember vividly the 21st December, 22nd December 2006, where I met the same set of the organization. The first advice what he gave was, if customers do not buy the perfume, they can live. But if you cannot sell the perfume, you will not be able to survive. It just hit me that, like, you know, how you have to always be up in your game or your skill level and understand the psyche of the people to convince them in what you say. Name one HR trend or innovation that excites you the most. It's a rise of AI-driven candidate matching in recruitment, which excites me a lot because it's leveraging the machine learning algorithm. It streamlines the hiring processes, enhances the candidate experience and improves the talent acquisition outcomes. So this innovation is something which is promising like you know, to revolutionize the HR completely by optimizing the matches and even optimizing and matches between the job seekers and employees. What is the most common HR myth or misconception you want to debunk? That remote work decreases productivity. There are a lot of studies which have been demonstrated like you know, remote workers often surpass office-based counterparts in productivity. It's just that the effective communication and clear expectations are not said. And not physical presence, drive performance. It basically remote work offers flexibility and fosters autonomy and often enhancing like, you know, employee productivity and well-being. So it's basically this remote work which is how people have a mindset when they display that productivity is not true. So I think this is one one HR myth I would like to rebound. Thank you so much, Rashid, for coming on to the show and be happy speaking with you today. I wish you good health, take care of your health and be connected.